Hi, I'm Romeo Diaz, and I'm going to tell you about this sentence I've heard again and again in the different warehouse. Why the Wi-Fi never works, and what steps need to be taken to ensure the networks and Wi-Fi in particular become transparent. Because one of the most important things to remember, it's our job to give them something functional, not their job to adapt to our difficulties, our design flaws, or our configuration worries. We begin immediately with one of the most frequent problems encountered when we're working on an existent infrastructure. Often due to a lack of knowledge, but which has a major impact of the Wi-Fi capacity, where houses are not designed as an offices or as a stadium, for example. Each type and use of site have its own constraint. This may be obvious to you, but unfortunately, it's too often where we see the warehouse design doesn't take into account all the constraints of the site. And one of the main architectural specificities of the warehouse are their size. In the storage area, we quickly exceed 20 meters high and long and narrow heights of 100 or 130 meters. But unlike a stadium, for example, the zones are more separate and the density of terminals is very less. The storage area are always full of surprises. And generally, the floor plan not provide us all the information, so a visit of site is highly recommended. For example, racks can go to the sailing, and some can only one or two level high. And all the material will not react as the same way. For example, a pallet of canned good will not react as a pallet of shoes. Analysis of the layout will also enable us to identify the error risk zone, which will need to be vigilant during the deployment phase. In this analysis, don't forget the out of sight interferers, such as airports, or when I said the weather radar, or the military zone. After analyzing of each area, of the warehouse, it's time to do the device analysis. As a first step, we need to do a list of all devices can be connected to your network and which drive their capacity. For this, I recommend the Michael Banos file, which is very helpful to this, or you can retrieve most of the information in the proper response frame. In the warehouses, the roaming capacity is very important. It's you need to check this capability too. And if you can, be part of the 145% of, of Wi-Fi network where the, where the fast roaming is enabled. And be careful when you're identifying your LCMI. It's a LCMI that you choose, not just a LC. Most, a lot of uh, warehouse have very old terminal used once or twice a year in a very specific area. It will be a waste to do all your design and configuration based on this old equipment. The device identification should not be limited to Wi-Fi equipment. It's also important to list all the equipment could have an impact. Cameras, presence detectors, Bluetooth, etc. And only after this detailed analysis, you can proceed to the design of your infrastructure and the configuration. If you don't, you have the risk of missing some important elements and not building an optimized architecture which will be impact to the user experience. Here, we have a typical example where the warehouse design doesn't take into account all the specificities. 
APs are placed randomly, so all hails are not well covered, and we, uh, we are dependent of when AP to cover the adjacent hail, so the content of the racks have an importance. However, at AP's level, we are no problem. The coverage is perfect because we are positioned at the top of the racks and there are no obstacles. But it's not our needed, and this provocates a lot of CCI. Here I've put a diagram of the AP used. They are omnidirectional antennas. To meet the constraints of long hails with racks, I recommend to use directional antenna with high gain to cover the entire length of the racks. Okuzan said yesterday it could, it's possibly to use omnidirectional antennas in warehouse, but I think it's not in the same warehouse with long, high, and uh, higher sailing. This slide shows also the difference in this type of warehouse of uh, omnidirectional at the left and directional at the right antennas. Once the design and installation phase has been completed, it's the life cycle of the solution. As the first step, to improve the troubleshooting and anticipate the user feedbacks, it's essential to monitor at least the following elements. For the AP status, you can monitor the uptime of the APs and the uh, transmit power of each radios. And for the application response time, you can set this in parallel with the gateway access time to see where the latency is. And just monitor the switch port. It's not enough for the supervision. After these elements have been put here for elements to monitor the evolution of the warehouse. You can, the user feedback and the incident tracking, you can have this information with satisfaction forms and discussion, evolving requirements with discussion with the warehouse, survey, uh, regular survey with survey reports. And like I say, uh, equipment inventory for the Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi. Once you've collected all these elements, you'll be able to identify optimization and improve the user experience, which I say at the beginning is the most important thing. In this last slide, I've list five tips I suggest you to take away from this presentation. If you take these five tips, design of the warehouse will not be complicated. Thank you for your attention.